Have you ever listened to your songs and thought something just felt off? Like there's something sneaky sabotaging your masterpiece? Well, I'm talking about the ninja sounds. These are the sounds in your music that are actively trying to avoid attention. Let's do a test and don't skip it. This is important. Listen to this short clip and let me know if you can identify the ninja sounds over here. Could you? If not, don't worry, I'm here to help. I will be playing in the Tyrus Gate in 9th of March. If you want to see me playing live and dance your heart out together, you can get the tickets with the links on the description. Join me! So this was a concept inspired by Il Gates and his post on the subreddit EDM production. I will let the links below so if you want to read his full text, feel free to go down and read all. So his concept of calling these background sounds, ninja sounds, makes everything much more fun and easier to explain. The ninja sounds are basically sounds that don't want to have the attention. But why people try to give attention to those ninja sounds? Bill Gates says it is due to the insecurities of producers. When they make a hi-hat sound, they try to think, what does this hi-hat sound say about me? And try to put it into the front. Or things like, how can I impress people with these white noise risers? But the problem over here is nobody cares about those sounds. If you think about, for example, a pop star like a Madonna, when she sings, everything else is on the background. Nobody would even dare to take the spotlight from Madonna when she sings. I know most of us make instrumental music, but even in that case, having a clear distinction between the lead sounds and the ninja sounds is super important to accurately and intentionally direct the focus to the listeners. Now, listen to this, and it should be quite clear who is the lead and who are the ninja sounds. In this example, we have only one singer, and it is this lead sound. And everything else is actually ninja sounds. We don't want people attention on them, so this. But that being said, anything can be a ninja sound, and anything can be also a lead sound. So let's take a look what makes a ninja sound a ninja sound. The two zone ninja sounds, I want you to listen here in the beginning because it's a very good example of pushing things in the background and making them ninja. From this time unchanged We're all looking at a different picture Through this new friend So we have a very obvious case. What makes the vocal becoming the lead and all the rest the ninja? By the way, this is a track that I made together with Andre Botes. We are super excited with this one. We will see when we will publish this one, but it's a super cool remix of Glory Box. The first thing is actually the lungs or the volume level. So you will immediately realize the vocals are much louder than anything else here. Clear volume difference. So what you need to do, make the element that you want to be in the front louder than in a singular element. We are getting minus 7.2 peak, quite a loud vocals. And let's say all the rest, all the elements all together, how loud are they really? Do you see all the elements together combined, not even reaching the lungs of the vocal itself? So this makes a clear distinction. If you, for example, take a look at individual elements, the pets, for example, they are way, 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 way quieter. And the most important second tool for you will be the equalizing or filtering. In this case, this is a very interesting example because our ninja sounds becomes the lead sounds when the drops hit in this track. So let me show you what I mean. Flowers, 
So we are bringing all these background rave chords, preparing it to be the lead sound. So all the trick over here, the single thing is just filtering the sound. That will both affect the loudness and the brightness of the sound. Do you see how the frequencies or filter is used to cut down? The more we open, the louder it gets, the brighter it gets, and more like a lead it becomes. And with the drop, we are removing vocal. So, with the ninja sounds, your brightness will come around 1 to 10k and be careful there, because otherwise it will eat up from the mid space and fight with your lead sound. But there is one more tool, delays and reverbs. The one thing that delays and reverbs do is push the sounds a bit background. For example, I can make my vocal over here easily like a ninja sound. Let's take the same vocals, put a heavy reverb on top. Let's make it dark. And listen again. We feel this becomes really ninja immediately. Reverbs and delays, they diffuse the sound. They will make everything more ambient. Yeah. Do you feel like this video is giving you some useful information? Please consider like and subscribe because it really helps me ton and keeps me motivated to make more videos like this. What I want you to now listen to this and try to identify our lead sounds and our ninja sounds. Alright, this is another track I'm working on. These vocals are just placeholders, but the loudness and the placements are all over the place. I get to decide which ones are my lead sounds. In this case, all these is the vocals. And my second lead is this. Beautiful arp. And all the rest are ninja sounds. So what I'm going to do, make these two relatively loud. Similar loudness and their all the rest goes down in the volume. Right? It shouldn't disturb me. problems we have two lead sounds they are fighting for each other remember what we do eq but before that i even realized here too much so we start first here cut the super lows open up a little bit and here like this right so overall more balanced sound not that bright not that dark and i'm gonna test this with vocal Now they are ninjas. Let's see the other ambience. Okay, this one is obviously too much. We just need the air out of it. I think this one is always sitting nicely. Let's listen all together with the ambience. A bit higher, maybe. Now the hats are a bit personal. Some people like really bright hats. Especially the older you get, the brighter hats you will have because you will have hearing damage. I often see that my older audience comment that it's sounding too dark and my younger audience commenting that it's too bright. So keep that in mind, your age is an important role. But for me, something like this. Now the ARP, how do we solve that ARP issue? Too bright at the same time, but if you take a lead vocal, vocal kind of disappear in the second half. It's more like ad libs, right? So it gives me immediate idea that okay, what if we do the same thing like we did previously before? Do I need to really this much of bright arpeggio there? Push them back, make it ninja at the beginning. I don't even need to 
do anything else because it also emphasizes the change in the roles and also gives a bit of variation because we are opening up slowly. So the one thing though here, can we push the vocals a bit more? There's two ways of doing it, just make it obvious for myself. I can duplicate it one more time. This will eat more from your CPU though, so keep that in mind. And here I may end up like making it maybe a bit more airy, a bit more darker. Try it together. Shall we reverb a bit more? Let's try. The transition could be a bit weird because we are changing quite a bit. Listen to it one more time. How fast you can actually decide on the ninja sounds and this brings so much focus to your track. My vocals will deliver this emotional romantic ambience and then my leads come in and it will create this dreamy song at the end, right? Super clear. So the mixing is of course much deeper than this and if you are more curious about like all the advanced tricks and tips and so on and so forth, I have a whole mixing masterclass with like almost 15 hours now of classes in it. I don't know how many classes in it, like 70 maybe even more. More. I will put the link on the description so you can take a look at that. Otherwise, if you want to learn more about music production in a pro level, I have more videos over here. Take a look at them.